Okay, so this is Keith Norris for CD News, and I'm joined by uh, Minister of Foreign Affairs from Sea Chels, uh, Jean Paul Adam. Thanks very much for thank you. Thanks for having me. Okay, so uh, Sea Chels has experienced problems with piracy in recent times. However, the government has also been very tough in tackling the problem, with pirates being convicted of their crimes, which has not happened in many other countries. What efforts are being made to eradicate piracy? Well, the the overall. Uh, um, the situation in which piracy is occurring is a very complex one, as you know. And obviously the key to, the key to really finding a long-term solution lies in Somalia. Now, that's going to take a long time to really sort out, but we've put forward a couple of uh, things which we feel can accelerate the process. We have been very tough at sea. The simple reason, we've been very tough dealing with pirates at sea for a very simple reason. Piracy is run like a business at the moment. And unless you can make the business model unviable, piracy will continue. And there's a couple of great tragedies that are, that, that are linked to piracy, which a lot of people don't realize. There are almost 800 hostages currently held in Somalia. And those 800 uh, hostages are of various nationalities. If we ever considered that there were 800 hostages from one single country, then a long time ago we'd have done something much more radical than we have done already. It's because there's so many different nationalities, from so many different backgrounds, from so many different countries, that it's a problem that has sort of crept up on us and, and people are not prepared to, I would say, take the measures that need to be taken. In the past, when we've had problems with terrorism around the world, hijackings, uh, etc., hijackings of whether it be aircraft, buses, and so on, there's always been a no-nonsense approach. We don't pay terrorists, so why should we pay pirates? So we have a very strong stance that there should not be any payment of ransoms. And the thing is, is that once these vessels are, are hijacked, once they get to Somalia, the only way that people are coming out is by payment of ransoms. So there has to be a very tough stance taken at sea, where if vessels are taken, the, there are very, very highly trained militaries around the world. All of them are actually telling us, if you speak to the commanders, they're saying, give us the opportunities to, to, to use what our knowledge, use our know-how, and liberate people at sea. Of course, it's never going to be a perfect situation. You will have instances, as we had recently, four Americans being killed uh, at sea, which is a tragic incident, and of course, that's, that's terrible. When you do have a more forceful approach, there is, there is a risk that, that these that there will be more of these incidences, but at the same time, if you break the model, if you break the business model of piracy, then uh, you are setting this, the situation to actually end the problem. So we need to be more forceful at sea. The second thing is we need to build institutions in Somalia. This is a very difficult thing, but we've already started doing certain things. Seychelles is one of the few countries we've actually signed uh, a memorandum on transfer of pirates with three authorities in Somalia, with the transitional federal government itself, but also with governments of Somaliland and of Puntland. And the reason we've done that is that we've actually got 46 pirates that we actually prosecuted in Seychelles. We don't think it's right that we should keep them forever. Soma Somaliland, for example, as one of the three uh, states, they're actually trying to do something against Paris, but they need the support. They need support of the international community. The UNODC is building a prison there. We see no reason why in the long term if we work with Somalia, build institutions there that we, countries like Seychelles and other countries, let's deal with piracy seriously at sea, and then we transfer whatever prisoners we have into prisons in Somalia so that they can, so the justice is served. Development depends also on legal systems and justice systems that work. So we need to do that seriously to be able to actually be able to develop Somalia. The first step is to try and build those institutions dealing with piracy, then can allow us to do other things, can allow us to build a fisheries industry in Somalia, allow small businesses to start. So, but it starts with security. We need to work along those lines. Okay, very interesting. Um, sorry, my answer was a bit long. Oh, no, it's fine. I'm sorry, I keep my contact lenses a bit. That, that's okay. So, do you want to take a minute? Or? No, no. It's okay. 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 Uh, at the International Trade Exhibition, which is currently taking place alongside this conference, a new design was launched for the sea chairs. The backdrop of the new sea chairs stand depicts a shot of one of the beautiful white sandy beaches of the island, with its clear turquoise blue seas. How does this tie in with the sea chairs brand, which is currently marketed as a bridge between civilization and culture? Well, I think the... Uh the, the thing with Seychelles is that we, one of our competitive advantages, we can, we, can, we can offer something which is untouched, something which is as close to nature, uh, but at the same time there is a culture which is very interesting, very dynamic. So the, the, the shot on our stand is actually of a, a beach that has no construction on it, there's no people on it, it's deserted. And Seychelles is one of the countries in the world that has taken the most steps to try and make sure that development is sustainable. 47% of our territory has been declared natural reserves. And we've done that because we realize the best way to actually be able to develop is by preserving. 
it's often a contradiction in terms. I mean, some people think development means you have to build, you have to build, you have to build. But we're saying, no, we have to look at the long term. So we, we build where we can, but we also preserve at the same time because you, you have to preserve also for the long term. So the Seychelles brand is about offering a, a view of development even, which is not just based on the traditional uh, ways in which, which uh, many other countries are developed. We're saying we want to be sustainable, we want to look for the future, we want to prepare a better situation for our children. Okay, great. And um, on that note really, uh, areas such as Cousin Island are a great spot for ecotourism. And the Seychelles is more so known as a laid-back uh, type resort. Uh, how important is ecotourism and what efforts have you made to promote that alongside the current cultural aspects yes. of it? Well, you, you've picked a perfect example in the, the Cuisine Resort, which is, um, I think it only has four villas and they use renewable energy and they try and recycle as much as they can. They also uh, grow a lot of their own food on the island. So it really is a question of, at the same time, it's very luxurious very very luxurious so we're saying that um, you can indulge yourself while at the same time being a very responsible citizen of the world and we're, we're, we're trying to tie in those brands those like the luxury idea with the idea of uh, environmental sustainability the two are not incompatible and actually in terms of our development as well if we look at things like renewable energy if we look at things at, uh, at uh, developing uh, projects which bring people closer to nature but very respectful of nature. These are things that can really transform our economy and give us a competitive edge. Not only for us, many other economies can do the same. And in fact, we're saying let's find ways that we can facilitate countries to go down that path rather than rely relying on uh, polluting industries and on oil, on, on uh, mining for example, these are all very destructive things. doesn't mean we have to end them overnight because many economies depend on them. But there are other ways that we can do things. And uh, Zanzibar and Seychelles have agreed to develop a memorandum of understanding on tourism cooperation, uh, which will include tourism student exchange programs at the college and university levels, as well as tourism staff exchange. This is a positive step in international relations, but how much of an effect will this have on industries in Seychelles? Well, I think it will have a very, very positive uh, effect. See, we're, we're developing a concept of what we call two-centre uh, two uh, two tourism marketing. So what that means is that more and more people Actually, they want to they want to go to Seychelles. Why not tag on another destination with it? Now we don't see this as competition. We see this as something positive. It's another thing we can another thing we can sell. It's another type of holiday we can sell. Uh, and we think that by marketing the region, so for example, the collaboration with Zanzibar, Seychelles and Zanzibar have this uh, historical relationship as well. Many of the trade uh, Seychelles and Zanzibar were set up as trading posts essentially. So there a lot of the trade in the 18th century were between Seychelles and Zanzibar, for example, which is one of our closest neighbors. So why not have people discover unique cultures that are developed, these two cultures that are so close and at the same time very unique and very different. We can do so much together. Um, Seychelles does have quite a, a, a lot of experience and we developed quite a very, quite a comprehensive training uh, facility. So we want to also share the expertise that we, we have where we can with, uh, with Zanzibar. Um, it's, it, we learn from each other. We learn from Zanzibar do a lot of things much better than us in terms of crafts, in terms of how they market their smaller, uh, their, their craft industry to, to the tourist uh, side of things. We, we can we can learn from each other. There's a lot we can do, and the two center holiday the two center holiday uh, model means that we can leverage what different countries in the region do well to actually make all of us more resilient. So we're doing this with Zanzibar, we're doing it, we plan to do it with Tanzania, we're already doing it with Kenya and we're doing it with South Africa. We want to do it with as many countries as we can because we think that uh, it is the future, it is the way of um, looking at uh, tourism in a much more sustainable way. Because if each country just considers it's competing against each other, um, you're just going to end up with a lot of undercutting. Whereas if the, if the tourism industry in Seychelles is interlinked with the other islands, we learn and benefit from each other. Okay. And, um, <coughs> sorry. Uh, just finally, uh, last week Carnival was celebrated for the first time in Seychelles, which is very well received by the international press. Congratulations yes. on that. Thank you. Um, while this is traditionally a Brazilian event, it is becoming increasingly international. How important is it that international cultures are celebrated in Seychelles? I think we, we, we're, as far as I'm aware, we're the only international carnival in the world. Most, quite a few countries have carnivals of one kind or another which celebrates an aspect of their culture. The Brazilian carnival is very much based on the samba and so on. And
and it's been going on for a number of years and they do it very well. We don't want to replicate what they're doing. Um, what we're saying is that Seychelles' history is one based on lots of different people from different parts of the world coming to Seychelles. And that's formed a melting pot. That's formed a, uh, a fusion of cultures which is in itself unique. We've created a culture from a number of other cultures. We've borrowed from others and that's created something that's so beautiful and so special. And we're saying, well, a carnival that celebrates all different cultures coming together is something that can really also give another side to our tourism. We don't want just the sun, sea and sand. We want the events. Uh, uh, based tourism and the carnival has brought the world to Seychelles and we've shown how open we are to the world and it's created so much of a buzz. Uh, we've also offered again in terms of the two center holidays we've talked to uh, many of our African partners mm -hmm. a lot of the uh, African countries that are relatively well developed in tourism are still maybe very reliant on one market. Um, if you take uh, uh, Seychelles, for example, we have made quite a lot of progress in diversifying our markets. We still rely a lot on, on European tourists, but we have a huge variety of European tourists. Uh, every country in Europe, we managed to get some uh, some people from different countries in Europe. We're also developing the Middle East very, very strongly. we also got a lot of potential in, in uh, Eastern Asia. So we, we, we use the carnival as well to say to our partners, come, show the world what you have. We've had 30 media uh, participants in that over 30 major uh, media participants in the carnival. It offers a window to the world for many of our partners. So again, it's an aspect of developing our own brand, but we see our brand as well as complementing an African brand of tourism, which we think is really the future. Africa is a continent that so many people can discover. So many good things happening in Africa that we don't hear about. Carnival is about celebrating that special part of Seychelles, but also of Africa. Okay, well, thank you very much, Mr. Alvin.